Dear friends, Dobry Vecher, good morning, good day, good afternoon, everyone. This is such a happy day, such a happy evening, because we have a great event at the American Center Moscow with the beloved guest, Joy Jones and Taya Galavanova. Hi, everyone. How are you all today? I'm feeling good. It's a beautiful day here in Washington, D.C., warm, sunny. So awesome. Washington, D.C. in the house. So awesome. Taya, what about you? How are you today? Where are you at? It was the same. I'm from, I'm in the Tenerife, in the island in Tenerife, and I'm happy too. I was uh, swimming a little bit this morning, uh, doing my things with Charles. It's a good day, uh, how every day. <laughs> no. Nice. Nice to see everyone uh, being awesome today. Yes. So today we talk about the art of writing children's books. And this is a super awesome topic. And we have super awesome guests. We have Joy Jones, who is a an incredible author. Also, uh, he, she published a lot of books. Also, she's a double Dutch rope activist and a member of DC Retro Jumpers team. And she's also into a lot of community activism, a lot of teaching practices. And she's also in hip hop world. She's also an MC, spoken word artist as well. Yes, much love, Joy. I hope I didn't forget any of the spheres you're into because it's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. So awesome. And Taya is an artist, also an activist, eco activist who is into uh, helping the world to get rid of trash. Mm -hmm and also a beginner author who has recently self-published a book as well. That's right, Taya. Yes. So awesome, yes. And I myself also write things. I write researches on subcultural topics as hip hop, and also I write articles about technology, namely blockchain and Web3. So all of us three, we write things. So we have a lot of things in common. Well, let's get started. Let's go, people. Uh, let me begin with asking you to show us a little bit of visuals. You have joy. You have a lot of books behind you, Ty. You have your books behind you. Can you show us a little bit? How do they look? Just flip the pages a little bit so that the audience, they have the feeling of what it is. Yeah, let's begin with you, Joy. Yes, here we go. Uh, this is my latest book. It came out during the uh, pandemic. It's called Jayla Jumps In. And it's about a girl who starts a double Dutch team. And... I'm someone who started a double Dutch team here in Washington, D.C. My team started off as a, uh, having fun with adults, other grown women who wanted to relive their childhood. And so we got together to jump rope. And then that expanded to the point where it became multi-generational. And then it expanded even further. And we had the opportunity to jump rope in Russia, which is how I met Bobish uh, on our tour of Moscow, St. Petersburg and Belgorod. Awesome. Yes. What a great story. Yes. Taya, would you show us something of your production? Yes. Let us see. Let us feel. Let's see the visual. Yes. yes. Uh, was in the uh, Finnish variants, I haven't so much uh, books. Uh, I have many texts, but no, not always those texts uh, fin are finished now in the process. But one book, what we are using in two languages, it's uh, Spanish, because we are living in Spain, a Russian variation for sure, because it's uh, our native languages, uh, for sure, we, all texts I'm creating in Russians. And after this, my friends helped me to translate this. Uh, but for me, a uh, way for to books uh, starting like uh, from illustration. I am most was like illustrator of my things. I, I try to illustrate for other books and because I'm artist, like my first profession. <laughs> no, it's my profession. I'm artist. And after this, I'm starting to do some books because it was my memory from the for long period. Uh, yes, it's okay. It's look like this. Russian variant, Spanish. So awesome. Yes, really, really cool. All right, people. So I have a question. What is the title of the book in English? Yes, I hope we will do it. <laughs> because yeah. I have left <laughs> for it. I hope we, we haven't translated it yet. Yes, so probably something like, you know, clean up game, clean game, something like this. Yes. Okay. okay. 
this is the best I can I can produce right now. <laughs> okay. uh, since we touched the topic of translations, uh, let me ask you both you Joy and you Taya, uh, what's your dream? Like what language? What languages? Uh, I have studied Spanish, uh, French, and American Sign Language. Regrettably, I am not fluent in any of those. Uh, I spent a summer in France many years ago, and uh, I was beginning to have fluency in French, and I would like to recapture that at some point. So uh, the language I have most uh, fluency in is French, so I guess that would be the first language I would like to see my words translated into. But I need to practice my French lessons first, I guess, before that happens. Would you like to translate yourself, or would you find... Oh, no. Someone, someone else has to do it. <laughs> I'm not that... Person that's... to translate it. <laughs> I am impressed that Taya was able to translate into Spanish, uh, as well as, of course, her home language of Russian. I'm very impressed. Cool, I'm... cool, cool. All right. What about you, Taya? Yes. What languages would you like to translate your book into? Uh, maybe I'm not understood, but I'm not translated my uh, these books. These books because for translating books in Spanish, for translating it's very important to understand it with jokes, the history of country, the tradition of country. It's not only languages. For sure, I'm speaking Spanish because I'm living here. Not so know so perfectly how how I can I how I want uh, I can. But um, uh, problem what. When we're translating, uh, we need to understanding uh, the traditional. For example, it's like in Harry Potter, John Rowling. Uh, I, I read this book in three languages, my native Russian, in English, and Spanish. And wow. I was surprised. I was surprised when I started to read uh, the Spanish version. And I saw like about some sweet things. It was Spanish sweet things. It was like in you know, other countries, child didn't know about this. But we using this for understanding for uh, for for situation when child can be more deeply understanding the poetry of these books, of their languages. Uh, about what my dream about languages. Um, for sure, I have country that's influence on the um, influ influence influence and my um, identity and uh, uh, it's like was Swedish Sweden uh, and like Finland Sweden languages um, uh, with uh, writers the Tove Janssen Tove Janssen uh, Tove Janssen no say like, uh, I, I don't know how it's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in uh, English variation and uh, it was for me it's like see uh, it's my dream to see <laughs> these books in a country what was impressed me too much in my life and uh, two country Finland and Spanish and for sure it's uh, English because uh, many books uh, history about English uh, it's like uh, many books um, the Alice from Wonderland and others was uh, very um, I was pressing about this I'm impressed. I was impressed. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yes. To build on this, um, let's continue talking about inspirations. Yes. So, Joy, who were your major inspirations? Yes. Who inspired you to start writing in the first place? Oh, I would have to give my parents credit for being my first inspiration. My mother was a teacher, and so learning to read was very important for her to teach me to do that. And my uh, father, he used to read stories to me, but then uh, if he read a book one time, then I would insist that he read every single page of that book over and over again. So he would be tired after working all day and it would be bedtime and I'd want to hear a story and he didn't want to read the whole book. So he got rid of the books and he would just talk to me about his life. And my first, my first children's book is called Tambourine Moon. And it was the result of um, a story he told me when I was a little girl, and I added my own imagination to it. Uh, the benefit in him making up stories or just talking about his life was that uh, I couldn't tell him, no, 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 you skipped a page, or no, 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 that story is longer than that. He was telling me his own stories, and I couldn't edit him. So if he didn't feel like telling a long bedtime story, he could make it short that particular evening. 
And uh, I couldn't contradict him on, on how the story should go because it was his personal narrative he was sharing with me. Uh, so those two influences, my mother who insisted that I learn how to read at an early age and would take me to the library every week so we could collect books. And my father who would tell me bedtime stories about his life or make up stories from his own imagination. Those were my best and first inspirations for getting started uh, wanting to be a teller of stories myself. I can remember the very first book I read, I was in first grade and we had a book called Tip. And Tip was a story about a little dog that was brown and black all over, except his tail had a little white tip. And I remember when we finally learned in class to read the entire book from beginning to end, memorize all the hard words in the story. Uh, I was so excited and I came home and I read the book to my parents over and over and over and over again. I know they probably were going crazy listening to me prattle on about this story about a dog. Uh, but I just thought that was such a wonderful, magical, exciting thing to be able to read, to look at a, a page and transform it into a story. So uh, those things excited me and inspired me. Well, that's a beautiful story. It is, it is, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Taya, what about you? Your family experiences, like your your parents, your relatives, your family, uh, who read books with you? Yes, who who did that? Um, I I'm not remembering in which moment uh, I'm starting to read book uh, to read book because it's uh, it was, I think it was all life <laughs> books, but it's really not true because for, for sure it was. But the first books, what I'm remembering. It was interesting. We are living in our country now, but I have this book here. When our mom, our mom, not, uh, you know, uh, sent this book to us because it was very important for me to read this book to my child, because I am remembering the long period. These books, all the times I'm returning, it's not so funny books. It's like uh, the, it's all books about the um, blue. Zapla, Galuba Zapla. All right. Do you know this word? Not uh, I. I um, Russian it, audience would understand us. Yes, it, no problem. It's, it, it, these books were uh, very sad, really, very sad, but very sensitive. And I'm remembering which in the house uh, of my grandma. I'm. It's the first my memory about how I'm reading these books. I'm not. Rem I, I'm not remembering the, peri the period of these ages, but. I'm remembering these books. And uh, for me, uh, I'm writing where, um, uh, in the old times in my house was like uh, many, many, many books. It was important things in my it, for my family to reading. And uh, I'm remembering like my mom was recollecting many, many books. And I, 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 thought, I think it's um, a very big experience in my past for me. And uh, for sure, uh, after this many years, I'm speaking inside my <laughs> inside my head <laughs> many things. And for me, writing it's like to have a voice, have a, our voice, voice to explain something important. The uh, form for ch child books for me, I'm remembering this. It's not only funny books. Many people think that. Now in literature, there is different books for sure, but many things very funny, funny, funny. But sometimes literature for child's not so funny, it very, very if for adults people too, you know. My Spanish try, trying to <laughs> to push my, my English. Oh, so much. good! We love Spanglish too. Yes, yes. yes. I'm a big fan. Of I'm understanding in the moment when I want to say in Spanish word. Yes, and. Um, is my aunt, for sure, for example, to uh, uh, she have her memory about my dad uh, in the books. It was for me a good uh, supporting too. All right. Yes. 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 
Um, this is important, people. This is important. Yes, family, father, mother, uh, gra gra grandparents, great grandparents. Yes, um, a lot of messages. A lot of messages we carry from there. Absolutely, uh, people. Let me ask you a little provocative question. So um, let's talk a little bit about negative feedback. For example, Jayla uh, jumps in or uh, Limpia, Chista Igra. So both you, Joy, and you, Taya, you encourage people to take action. You uh, encourage people to jump into the rope and start jumping. And Taya encourages people to go and clean up the trash on the beach. Um, parents may get confused. They may get scared. What's up? The you know, uh, trash is dirty. Joe uh, jumping rope is dangerous. Yes. Have you ever gotten any negative feedback? And what was it? How how did you deal with it? Let's begin with you, Joy. <laughs> uh, with Jayla Jumpson, I really can't say I've gotten negative feedback. Everybody uh, loves to play. Uh, children in the United States don't play outdoors as much as they did when I was a kid, and so. Uh, most people see that as a positive thing to suggest to children that they go outside and have fun. Um, it's, it's been a, a pleasant ride for me. I can't say that anybody has had much to say that hurt my feelings or made me feel bad. The only negative was me. Uh, originally, uh, a colleague suggested that I write about Double Dutch. And I didn't, I didn't warm to the idea initially. Uh, at that time, I was managing the double Dutch team. And as the manager, I had to organize people and do public relations. And I figured I had said everything I, I could say about double Dutch. I, I didn't want to talk about double Dutch any further. But this person uh, was knowledgeable about the publishing market. And she really encouraged me to uh, give it a try. And when I sat down with a blank sheet of paper and started writing, I found out I did have another story to tell about Double Dutch. So uh, that was the only negative, me not wanting to do it initially. But I'm so um, glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what a great feeling, yes. Uh, I know exactly what you mean, yes. Uh, what about you, Taya? Any parents worried that children will touch, uh, you know, dirty trash on the street? <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> Yes, for sure. It's it's not about my books. It's about uh, people don't um, tell me about how your book is bad. Not it's not about. Uh, but I can see with people reactions about our projects when we are inviting. Sometimes I'm feeling like we uh, we like maybe, but we are, when we start uh, when we starting to moments when we need to to go and uh, because our projects for for example, it's not about. Um, to so much cleaning, uh, it's more about to educations for childs for families, not to how to, how to tell this, not to to do the trash <laughs> in the streets. It's it's because it's education starting with very small ages, and uh, in my books it's like uh, um, like like playing you know and some people okay okay it's a good idea <laughs> but when the moment when we need to wait maybe where i imagine we imagine what we need to take this no it's most about education so for sure in our meeting we are collecting we are trying to clean a little bit the beach and others but um i uh, heard a very only good um, um, like uh, participation conversation about this, you know. It wasn't. It was about the projects. We, we went, okay, okay. We, we next times. <laughs> we next times. But many people not. <laughs> Yeah, but even uh, my little addition, even when people say next time, and even if they don't visit, it doesn't mean that they don't get impacted, you know, even uh, having that in mind that it, it exists, it's it's already some message that people send. Um, awesome. Uh, people, we remind you that who is watching on YouTube or if you're watching on VK.com, uh, you can send in your questions. And we will ask these questions live. Uh, we will ask Joy and Taya to answer those questions. So you can post them there and we'll read them. Meanwhile, we also have our two questions coming in. Let me begin with question number one. Joy and Taya, 
how would you describe your unique writing styles and how do you believe they influence the way children engage with your stories? I have a fairly straightforward writing style. Uh, I write for both adults and children, and I like to write about ordinary things. So I'm not someone who does science fiction or fantasy, or uh, I don't write in a very flowery language. Uh, I'm pretty plain and simple. Uh, I'm working on a uh, new children's story that will be coming out next year called The Sky Is Not Blue. And one of the things I ran into is I think, at least when I was a kid, I liked stories that poked fun at the grown-ups. And uh, in The Sky Is Not Blue, uh, one of my uh, colleagues read the story to give me feedback. And she says, Joy, I think you need to tone down how mean the teacher is in your story. And I'm thinking, you know, a kid would have fun reading about a mean teacher who gets in trouble. And my friend said, you do know that the people who buy books for children are adults. You can't make the adults be too bad because otherwise, you know, teachers and parents and librarians are not going to like the book. So I, I did, I did uh, tone down that part a little bit, although I still believe that kids like it when the adults uh, are, are not always the smart authority figures and, and they get their comeuppance uh, during the course of a story. Um, so I'm hoping that once they get past the barrier of the adult who's purchasing the book for them, that children feel engaged with the main character who gets to point the finger at the adult and say, you, you're not the smart one, I'm the smart one this time. Right. Yes, word, word up. Taya, what about you? Uh, your unique style, how would you describe it? Maybe you can also touch a little bit about the, the idea of drawing on top of the photos from the blog. That's also interesting. Yes. So unique style, Taya, what's your unique style? Uh, yes, you, you um, tell me really things what's it's working because uh, I was like illustration the first times and with uh, illustrator the first times. And uh, what's why when I'm many, many years before, when I um, was in one event in the Germany, uh, uh, we cre I'm starting to create the story. Maybe it's the first experience when I, <laughs> I write it, uh, just uh, 15 years or before. It, uh, it's not like uh, we, I'm mixing the, better I will show, I'm mixing the photos and after this I'm uh, putting inside my um, heroes, the, inside my photos. I'm trying, I'm trying to using two sides uh, for example it's like real photo inside many 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 objects but uh it was the first my story was very short <laughs> it was the, the first time it was illustration after we art objects and after this it was a little story a little story it was fairy uh fairy tales of northland it was about uh, about our Saint Petersburg uh, place when we was uh, lived in, uh, when we 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 were live in this spirit, and uh, uh, after many times, I'm starting to do like I'm speaking. I'm starting writing uh, how I'm speak with my tales. The story it was it was only my languages how I'm speaking in real life. And for sure, uh, I am. I like po po poetry things. I'm really interesting about literature. Uh, what's why in this moment was a big <laughs> collections uh, uh, of books. And uh, when I starting to do all the times, oh no no, it's it's a bad not it's a phrase I can using uh, all the times. Okay, uh, and I'm feeling like I'm in the process <laughs> of, my, of creating my styles. I'm not feeling it's uh, what's what very we are finished. All right, all right, all right. Yes, uh, thank you for asking your questions, dear, dear audience. Yes, we encourage you to send more questions. And um, meanwhile, we have question number two. And I think this is this is uh, really designed for joy to answer. 
can you share a bit about the process behind writing a children's book from the initial idea to the final published book? What are the main stages? Okay. Um, it's a long process. Typically, when I have an idea for something I want to write, it's something I have been thinking about for a very long time, years, perhaps decades, uh, that I've been thinking about this idea or concept. And uh, even with the Double Dutch book, uh, Jayla jumps in, even though someone else suggested it as a topic for a children's book, I had obviously been jumping rope and I had learned to jump rope as a child and did it throughout my childhood and then came back to it as an adult and had done it for a number of years before someone said, you should write a book about that. So it's been something that I've been living with for a while usually. Uh, for me, it takes maybe two or three years to write a book if it's uh, a book of any uh, size. Uh, obviously, um, a picture book doesn't take as long because a picture book is usually a thousand words or less. So that didn't take a long time to compose the picture book. But um, maybe two years to write the first draft of the book. And then it takes a while to sell the book, typically. The unusual thing with Jayla Jumps In is the very first editor I sent it to bought it. And uh, after she said yes, it took maybe another two years before it was finally published. So uh, it's a slow process. Uh, so I, I would say the main stages are uh, getting it written. Because I, I always have lots of ideas. It's, it's, I have a zillion ideas floating in my head that I could pull from. But choosing an idea and committing to that, getting the work done, being disciplined about coming back to it month after month to keep writing on it. Uh, till you have a completed manuscript. And then the process of sending it out to different publishers uh, and not being discouraged, because usually that takes a while before you find a marriage where you and a, an editor meet minds. Uh, so the challenge, I think the biggest challenge is the discipline in getting it written and completing it, and then finding someone who likes mm -hmm. the story well enough to publish it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Really, really true. So awesome. So interesting people. Yes. Uh, we are really happy that we have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, there is one more and this is really interesting. Uh, often I come across children's books with characters that could scare even adults. In your opinion, what are your characters look like? Do kids like your pictures? Taya, let's begin with you this time. Yes, no, so I didn't know, but my my child and child's, uh, for example, now my my books in the bibliotheques of uh, my town when when I am living, and uh, I'm connecting with many childs about this and parents about this and wait all the years. It's so very kind. Uh, I, it's only what I'm here. Uh, I heard about this. I don't know how <laughs> opposition, but um, uh, I don't know because. Um, I'm, I didn't like the characters, uh, scary characters. <laughs> it's not my feeling, do you know? It's really, uh, for, I don't know, maybe for some people, my, uh, war, my how sp space works, like artist, it's scary, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm trying, um, in, including a good uh, sentence inside. If, uh, mm, like mom, when I'm trying to find the books, all the times I thought, uh, okay, it's not so scary, oh, it's scary. <laughs> For sure, with Gary Potter, my, our me child, not to uh, not see uh, seeing uh, the Gary Potter's movie because it's very scary. And the third uh, parts of his books, we want, we, uh, we can read only in our languages not so because when we when when you are reading in our languages you not to fall tan deep in the story you can separate uh with uh with things what inside you know because uh, starting to third times it's really scary story i like very much with, with books but 
<laughs> for me, for my child, in uh, at eleven years old, I'm I thought I thinking it's not so experience so good for this moment in the, in their native languages. Do you know? All right. Yes, and that's a smart tip. Yes, people. So if you want to share some content with your children that you are not one hundred percent sure that it's too good, share it in a, in other language. Yes, at least you you get some benefit of learning the other language. Meanwhile, all right, uh, Joy. I have a question to you. You mentioned um, you mentioned earlier that children don't play on the streets that much nowadays, right? So yeah. and children children don't read that much either. I mean, the paper books. We got a whole big competition with cartoons. We got video games and everything is getting increasingly more, I should I should probably say more impactful because everything is so fast nowadays. Yes. Uh, how, you know, how can we even compete with this uh, super bright and fast world of video games and cartoons with our children books? Well, if children imitate what adults do, so adults need to read books, uh, be physically active. And so if your kids see you doing it and enjoying it, they're more likely to do it. If not right now, then later on when they uh, can appreciate your wisdom. Uh, when I do book talks for Jayla Jumps In, uh, it's not always practical to bring the whole double dutch team to demonstrate double dutch to them. But I tell children about games I used to play in addition to jumping rope, uh, games that used, that did not involve computers, games that in many cases didn't even require a, a battery. So I bring in some of those toys to show them uh, what I used to play with. For example, I don't know if this was popular in Russia, but this is called a slinky and it's a wire. <laughs> You've seen this before? It's a, a spiraled wire. Uh, and you know, you just look at it move and you can uh, have it, uh, put it on a incline and it'll walk down uh, the steps by itself if you set it up the correct way. So I pass that around. Uh, this is called a kaleidoscope and you put it up to your eye and turn and you see colored bits of glass and it makes interesting patterns. So I pass that around and they get a chance to play with the kaleidoscope. Uh, this is something that I had a lot, a lot of fun with as a kid, you know, blowing bubbles. <laughs> so uh, I pass that around and kids do still blow bubbles. So a lot of times when I pass these and other toys around the room and they start playing with them, they get captivated and they realize there are ways to have fun that don't require a battery or a computer or a digital uh, website or a video game. Uh, and I'm hoping that some of that connects and they might try it again at a later time. Yay. Yeah. So that's the way people, yes. Example and passion. <laughs> and patience. <laughs> patience. <Yeah. laughs> Sometimes it takes years. Yes. For example, I, you know, I start to appreciate a lot of a lot of wisdom of my father only when I ended up being here on the island far, far away from, ah. uh, from his words. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, only years after. All right. Yes, uh, people, mm, I got some more interesting trendy question. Yes. And this is about AI. Yes. So a lot of people think that AI, artificial intelligence, at some point, we'll be able to learn to do all the creative work as good as we do it. Yes, as humans do it. Um, do you think, is it even possible that AI can manage with um, uh, children books? Because it's so much about feeling the atmosphere, the different thing. Yeah, so would AI ever be able to somehow... Uh, get into this? Uh, is it any danger for, for authors of children books? Taya, what do you think? AI and children books? Um, how interesting questions. Uh, it's about AI. Uh, it's a new generation. If you know, we, we child will be new generation too. Maybe that's why we're not understanding clearly what, how it will be working with new generation. <laughs> but uh, about this time, I can tell. Uh, I can yes it's like um 
where is two type of books? Where is most books about this, like a published company to creating of the rules when we have, uh, uh, like when we told you, okay, you need the sheets, 10 sheets about these characters with only with text, uh, with uh, something clearly uh, like a uh, situation what we're repeating, repeating all the times, you know, it's like, it's not only commercial products, for sure, where is some art inside, uh, but it's most understandable for, we underst I'm understanding why, because we want to um, publish, and have a result, you know, we sell. Because we, we segments, I don't know how, segment, uh, we're part of books, we very um, just waiting with, uh, with books, in very same, we, we are very same, you know, with books. And for this type of books, I'm sure with AI can, can we do the same? <laughs> can to uh, an, 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 uh, have an realization, analysis, this uh, recollecting the all in creating something the same, uh, something the same. But for books like uh, was creating with uh, ideas, with story of artists like uh, Joy, for example, with uh, which story will be touching people uh, because their experience was the same. Do you know? Was the way they, they can see in your books uh, their stories very child's uh, stories, do you know? And um, I, I, for, for sure, no, <laughs> I'm not sure what can be a, a repeating the uh, memories and uh, senses the uh, people, humanity. <laughs> it's, uh, and for we stories, which was, do you know, were many, many child story, very great child story, like uh, Alice from Wonderland, various books, I came to uh, translating Vietir Vivach, the windy. Wind in the Willow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a story for their child. And the, uh, the parents told story for their child. Parents on the. It, I, I told about two books, what I'm, uh, I know about what they will, uh, was about for their child. Do you know? It's story. It's, the, it's magic. It's the things what can be repeating. But for the first variant, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Yes. What about you, Joy? A any any insights on AI? Yes. Uh, is it any danger for children, books, authors, or maybe it's it's a good help? Maybe you you are already using it in your work. Uh, no, I don't use artificial intelligence. And yes, it's a danger for all writers, even creative writers. Uh, the primary danger, I think, is Computers have the ability to do, or machines in general, have the ability to do nearly everything that humans do. But that doesn't mean that we ought to allow machines to do everything that humans can do. You can buy a cookie from the store and it can be delicious. But if you bake the cookie yourself and eat it, that's a different experience because you made the cookie. And I don't, if if we have machines do everything for us, I think we're de denying our own humanity. Oh, and yeah. even though, yes, uh, it might be quicker to go to the store and buy the food already made, but you lose something in not having the process of preparing it yourself. And I say that as someone who doesn't even like to cook, but still I can respect uh, the process of humans making something ourselves. And so I think uh, when I write, I'm thinking about the reader, uh, the machine, the computer, the artificial intelligence is not thinking about the individual child or adult who might pick up the book and what I want him or her to feel. So I think uh, losing that part of the connection from one person to another would be a terrible loss if we go too far in that direction. Oh, yes, yes, definitely true. It, it has value in, in itself and of, of its own. Yes, absolutely true. That process. Uh, more questions are coming in in our chats. And we have such a question in here. How do you keep up with the changes in children's tastes and preferences in literature over the years? 
have you noticed any specific trends in children's interests mm -hmm. this is interesting okay um who wants to comment on this can go i'll comment okay. on that I, I don't try to write to the market i write what i find interesting and hope that other people will find it interesting too i pay attention to what's going on in the world of publishing but i don't let that dictate what i write necessarily and one of the trends is that uh there's an effort to be more inclusive to write uh stories by people who previously were ignored by the publishing company for example in my case more stories by and about black people uh stories about people with different uh, conditions, uh, medical or physical conditions, uh, including people who you don't often see in literature uh, being given a voice in as the protagonist in a story. So that's a trend that I like. Awesome, yes, and that's a strong position, people. Uh, we got a new question here, and that's interesting, yes, and I think um, um, Taya also uh, might have some words on this. Do you have some books about animals? Yes, so maybe we can get to see the, the crocodile from the book, yes. And <laughs> to you, Joy, too, of course, yes, if you have some books about animals. Let's go. People are fascinating to me, far more fascinating than anything else on planet Earth, so no, I don't have any books about animals. Got it. <laughs> yes, I have some books, some stories. What I not, but it wasn't published it in this moment because I want to, I want to create the most. The first part, <laughs> second part, the third part. It was uh, the first. Uh, what I came to show, yes, it's about the crocodile and the small birds. It's very, uh, very. Uh, I don't know. It's very popular, <laughs> popular company <laughs> together. And uh, for sure, because it's like uh, for childs, it's uh, I think I I think that for childs, it's really uh, normal to feeling like animals, like person uh, person uh, have personately sides, you know, like humanity. We we we're not. Uh, it's most um, easy for them. To not feeling uh, so difficult, like mm -hmm. ah, it's the same like my friends from school and now it's a good experience too. But how how I'm feeling? Well, it's our part too. When we can we understanding something from um, example? Uh, oh, okay. With birds, did this strange thing. Maybe I'm too <laughs> doing this strange thing in my life. But we're not thinking about what what story about the about them. Do you know? And. Uh, uh, Mm, about um, about my stories, uh, those animals were all stories, all stories. <laughs> it was animals uh, with uh, in one of my stories, uh, a raining a raining boy, a raining boy. It was really I, I'm not to publish with I'm I'm not published. <laughs> Sorry for my <laughs> I'm feeling kind of strange. Uh, um, it was about like playing with words, do you know, with real animals and real rain or boys. All the times I'm playing with words, do you know, it's uh, in one moment you can think in what is real uh, character, it's child's, another moment you're understanding it not. But we have the same, uh, uh, same sides of their identity, do you know, and uh, most about languages. Uh, I'm, I didn't know how to translate it because it's playing with words in my, in my native language is Russian. And uh, when we are starting our, uh, when we are starting our discussions, it's really difficult. That's why very difficult to translating, because uh, sometimes artists uh, or writers creating things like feeling, the rhythm, you know, it's uh, yes. <laughs> yeah awesome awesome people yes uh actually we don't have much time left yes we got like 10 15 minutes left so i encourage people in the chats on youtube and vk.com to send more questions 
we'll be happy to answer them. And let me touch one interesting topic. So the classic dream of an author or of a future author is, you know, to get published, to get published with a big publisher, you know, get your books around the world and also sell them, maybe make some passive income with that. Uh, let me touch um, the other side of the story, self-publishing. Yes. So when you publish a book, um, you know, not a big quantity, a little bit, uh, and you start spreading it around. So that was the story about Taya's book. Actually, our uh, friend Sergey Ivanov from Hip Hop Library Russia, Joy also knows him because that was our initial contact in uh, Moscow. Uh, Grant Papp, yes, Hip Hop Library Russia, who um, supported and um, mm, hosted the project with Double Dutch back then in Russia. Yes, so he helped to publish that book, self-publish it, and spread it around hip hop libraries in Russia. Uh, Joy, do you have any experience with self-publishing books? Or maybe if not you, then people do it, your friends do it, if they can't find any publisher who wants to, you know, publish it for them. Uh, what about uh, self-publishing? Yes, uh, I was part of a performance poetry group and we would do performances all around town. And we self-published a book of our poems. And um, because we had an audience, we, we, we would do a show and then after the show, we would sell the book. That helped us to spread the word around it. It, it didn't I think we sold maybe a thousand copies. In addition, to get the book published initially, we wrote a grant and the grant paid for us to cover our publishing costs. So, and that we sold was profit for us. So that worked out really well. Um, part of the grant was that we gave away the first 100 copies, uh, which was not a problem. And then everything over that we could sell and, and keep the funds. So I would say to someone who's self-publishing to try to identify the people who are likely to purchase your book and work out a marketing plan to reach that audience so that you have some uh, expectation of earning the money back. Mm, yes. Yes, cool piece of advice. And also, yeah, grants, they do help, of course. Yes, yes, this is awesome as well. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, new question in the chat. Yes. Uh, thanks for asking. This, this one is great. What advice would you give to aspiring children's book authors looking to make their mark in the industry? Uh, I have a couple of things to suggest. One, be prepared for a long haul. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Get used to being rejected. Being rejected is part of the writer's journey. I would also say to try to cultivate your audience even before your book comes out. Uh, think about who the likely reader is. A lot of times new writers are asked, who's your audience? And they say, everybody. No, uh, not everybody wants to read your book. Uh, there are people who like poetry. There are people who like children's books. There are people who like science fiction. The person who likes science fiction may not be the same person who likes mystery books. So you, if you're writing a mystery, find out, you know, uh, uh, join groups of other mystery book lovers, uh, begin to get to know those people and have them get to know you so that you're spreading your uh, market and uh, engage with those people on a regular basis, even before you have a book to sell. So that once your book is ready, whether you're self-publishing or traditional publishing, you have some potential readers who are likely to buy, buy the book. Hmm. Yeah, awesome. Awesome advice, people. Yes, this is so awesome. Yes. And I hope this is going to inspire a lot of people and help them out. And maybe we'll get to have a whole new wave of interesting stuff coming up in Russia and um, in the US who's watching this. Yes, I'm really happy about this. Yes, Taya, what about you? So you had that that thing that Joy was describing just now when you send your books, like uh, initially two years ago when you started sending out um, the emails to the publishers and then um, <laughs> they were saying, oh, this is not interesting. We don't need that. This is, you know, we can't. Uh, what was your reaction? How did you deal with that, with that, uh, you know, uh, re re rejection, yes? How did it feel? Yes. What what made you keep going? Why did you keep going? 
Uh, maybe uh, for sure. It's uh, I have two part uh, always <laughs> always reactions with uh, with uh, silence, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's normal. You need to be you need to be and you need understanding what when you will send this will be silenced maybe not for all uh uh it's it's work too to sending to to uh, searching where uh our, it's like uh like joy told uh tells tells about the audience audience the uh publisher uh, publishing it the same you need understanding uh in which publishing you you uh you are saying sending this do you know and when i asked uh, first time it was okay okay but i have two letters where it was pandemia in many um editorials in spanish uh, publish uh, company told me the small that okay it's i have two letters when will big letters from uh redactors they told me it's it's a good story i like this but you know uh, we have crisis now. <laughs> well, yes, because yes. In, in Spain, I, uh, uh, in Spain, there is crisis now for this uh, because the pandemic we closed the all, and we can't to take this story because many um, pictures, you know, for printing this, it was too much because it's many uh, and new authors. It's di difficult for them to prom promotion this, but. Uh, it's uh, and and I was normal. I I I thought like it's okay, okay. But after this, uh, very story with my book after you know in the bibliotheques and from people in our projects, it's starting the books starts to live there. Uh, uh, life, you know. Gain community life, yes, yes, yes community yes. life. Yes, it's. Mm -hmm. I like what I have this experience because it's a demonstration. But not only when you publish your things, it can be working. You know, it can be really uh, starting to uh, um, why we are why we are writing. No, uh, yes. we are writing because we want to speak about something very important for us. You know, I, I for me it's like this. Uh, and uh, uh, when I am speaking about my audience, I'm like um, Joy tell, 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 tells. It's like uh, some person who, with whom I'm speaking. Do you know? I can imagine which ages we have in Davos. And when I started to see a real person who uh, who reading my books in the bibliotheques in the, our projects, it's very very good sense do you know it's like it's not about so only business things like edition and analysis and publishing it's not i'm normal yeah. to reading difference <laughs> Awesome. Yes. And it's awesome that we have, you know, different stories, different examples and different paths and different stages of one path. This is awesome. Yes. I love this so much about this discussion today. People, we are almost, uh, we are about to wrap this up soon. So yes, probably we'll accept one more lucky question from the chats uh, on YouTube and VK.com. Maybe Telegram users, they would like to send something in. Yes. American Center Moscow, much love for uh, setting up all these conversations. This is beautiful, incredible guests all the time. Yes, and much joy to have joy around. This is so great. Yes. Uh, before we um, continue that search for the lucky final question, Joy and Taya, let me ask you to read something from your books, to quote something. Yes. So Joy is going to do that in English, and Taya, you can do that in Russian. Yes, because, because we have the Russian audience. Yes. Let's um, listen to uh to your books yes let's hear them from the authors themselves this is exciting and magical <laughs> uh, i have another book for young people for teenagers called fearless public speaking and actually a lot of adults are afraid of public speaking so i'll read something from that let's go suppose you were a teacher and you had to present a geography lesson to your class but you had to teach one student at a time. You'd have to repeat that same lesson 20 or 30 times. Suppose the president wanted to tell each citizen about a new tax law. 
if done one on one, that explanation would be given 6.1 million times to the residents in the Washington DC metropolitan area alone. Now you know why public speaking was invented. <laughs> hey, big up, yes, much love. This is so awesome. Actually, I think if there is one book we definitely want to have in Hip Hop Library Russia, then that's that book. Sergey Grand Pop Small One, <laughs> let's get that book. Yes, let's have it in Russian hip hop libraries because that's the stuff we need. Yes, that's the real, real, real public uh, speaking with this important hip hop vibe to it. We love that. Yes, Taya, let's let's hear something from you. Yes, read it out. Okay. I'm starting <laughs> from this. У крокодила было невероятное количество имён. Кокодрил и кукудрил, крокодил и крокодили, бая, мамба и матан. Он узнавал их по надписям на ящике, в котором путешествовал. Крокодил летал по миру с выставками, чем невероятно гордился. И даже знал целых пять языков. Вот только говорить на них ему было не с кем. Как только он открывал пасть, собеседники сразу исчезали. От этого ему было очень грустно знать столько всего интересного и не иметь возможности ни с кем обсудить. I don't know what you said, but it sounded very poetic and very <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Yes, I, I personally love that part. People, yes, uh, much love. Yes, this is so great. Uh, so, t yeah, because we didn't translate that and it's impossible to translate, it had it had a lot to do with the names of the characters. Yes, the names, the way they sound, the play with the words. Uh, Joy, le le let me ask you on the same topic. So uh, tell us a little bit about the names of the characters in your books. I'm sure they're special somehow, like Jayla, the other characters. Like, what about their names? Are they somehow related to some stories? How do you how do you come up with them? Uh, the character Jayla was originally called Kayla. Uh, in my first draft of the book. And then when I was preparing my book proposal and I was looking at other books on the market that were similar to mine, I discovered another book about Double Dutch and the main character's name was Kayla. And one of the members of her Double Dutch team was named Melissa. And one of the members of the Double Dutch team in my book was named Melissa. Now, I, I did not know this writer. We did not communicate with each other in any way. But it was interesting that the names were similar. So I had to change some of the names in my book so it wouldn't be a carbon copy of her book. <laughs> Whoa, yes, yes, yes. So there are there are a lot of um, uh, plot twists when, uh, you know, doing this, right? Yes, you may find out that people have very similar names. And Taya also had that story because in Russian, this, this is called Chistaya um, Igra, and there is a whole project in Russia uh, that is not related to this book, but is related to cleaning up the nature. Mm -hmm. And it's also called uh, something very close, Chiste Igre, I think, right? Something like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yes. the same projects. But uh, I have uh, other parts of these stories about when we are translating with my friend Salanis the Hope. Uh, she is the illustrator too. And she is Spanish person. That's why she understanding the story of languages with jokes of languages and what's its meaning in the rhythm of languages when we, <laughs> about our um characters crocodile it was the first this part by a mamba y matan it sounds very terrible in spanish and she told no 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 we need to change English because it's feeling it's it's meaning very very terrible things and what's why in to, to my thing uh, to my books very uh, different names for them <laughs> because we need to change she uh, she's understanding this because she is a native person of Sp uh, she is native spanish mm -hmm. what's yes, why yes. That's true. They are absolutely different. True. Spanish and Russian version, totally different. Yes. But it has the same feeling. So big up to Alanis who translated this. Yes. Beautiful work. All right, people. So that lucky question from the chat didn't come. Then uh, we uh, can spend the last minutes of this streaming uh talking about community work y'all do yes 
I don't know if it's related with the books you write or it's something else. Let us know about community projects you're up to because Joy is big in this thing. Uh, actually, thanks to Joy, uh, Small One and I, when we were visiting United States, the US, when we were visiting Washington DC, we were able to go to very, very important places and uh, give some workshops there. Yes, and Taya has her work with uh, cleaning up um, actions on the beach with local community here. So let's wrap it up with some beautiful wisdom about community work we do and um, social activism we do. Um, Joy, what about you? Yes, tell us your stories. Well, one thing I do is I work at a mental hospital here in Washington, D.C. And Bobish, uh, I was very glad to be able to host you at the hospital so you could uh, do a presentation, a hip hop presentation for the patients there. Uh, in fact, I'll be going there in two weeks to present them with a book of their poems. Uh, I do creative writing workshops there and I'm gonna give them a book of their poems uh, and also a poetry video where I had actors act out some of the poems. So that's gonna be a big celebration. So I'm looking forward to that. So awesome. Yes. Beautiful stuff. Yes. So uh, let me clarify again. So you are publishing a book with the with the stories that people in the hospital wrote, right? Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yes. Beautiful message. Really awesome. Yes. Uh, Taya, what about you? Community, community work. What about the the projects you do? Tell us a little bit. Now I have two projects. Uh, I'm not only, not only him, the, you are two in these projects. And mm -hmm. it's a big project about uh, uh, education, about how to clean the world inside your community. It's uh, many projects with uh, where is the same idea about to cleaning uh, around, around. But we are trying uh, to in in uh how to in skate um, yeah connect mm -hmm. connect connect the community the community of uh, our city it's not local community and these projects like shops and others do you know we are trying to only uh, we uh, all the times when uh, Childs uh, recollecting something, they collect the points about to participate in different events too, in our projects, in our city, in our town. Do you know? It's about local community, how to connect with all people, all part of all of this, not only uh, cleaning or doing events and others. Do you know? Uh, because second, my projects, I'm doing the art class for people it's uh, uh for my neighborhoods uh because i'm believing what education what inspiration uh need to be open without uh, borders for with money and others do you know for because some people uh can, have a possibility to participate uh, in the class of art for example because it's very um, it's many um, so much money for paying for materials, for for tickets, you know, for, for entering and uh, participate. In the, and that's why, uh, yes, I'm trying to connect these two projects now with local community. Great stuff. Yes, free classes, really important. Yes. Uh, great, great, great people. Yes. Uh, I thank you two so much for joining in today and sharing beautiful words of wisdom about your paths with writing children books. Yes, I hope we got many people inspired with this. Share this video with your friends. If you have a beginner author who is looking into this or maybe is scared about trying, share this video. We have cool vibes in here we show that this is for everyone everyone can try and everyone can succeed in one way or another and this is beautiful about this path that you can you know you can find your own way of making through all this cool final shout outs from you joy and taya and we wrap it up visit me on my website www.joyjonesonline.com 
We will. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.